This morning, this afternoon, I'm going to tell you about the liver. This morning, I'd like to share what is a good diet. Now, we say good diet means it is good for our body, but then we think it is very expensive and it is very rare and we think good healthy diet is something we cannot really buy easily. We have this kind of wrong ideas. So you know many ginseng You know ginsengs, you know they are very expensive. Sometimes they are worth more than $5,000 or so. But then scientists haven't proved the nutritional effect in ginseng. For example, antioxidants and so forth. But, you know, those kind of things, antioxidants and, you know, those kind of nutritions, you know, you can find it in any different kind of food. So what is a good, healthy diet? Now, please, you need to get out of, you know, that box that you've been in, and you need to have a good concept You know, something that we've been in, that box, you know, is very commercialized. Especially now we have like, you know, well-being, you know, culture. And they always say it's very expensive. And we have to think about, hmm, then those well-being food, well-being diet, is that really all good and expensive? It must be. Now we have to think about this again. What is good for our body? Well, actually, that kind of food doesn't exist. You know, our body needs all different kinds of nutrition. But then you need balance in all different kinds of nutrition. You need balance. For example, let's say vitamin C is very good and important, but, but if you overuse vitamin C, you know, of course, it can be very harmful. Five or six years ago, vitamin C hit great sensation in Korea. So, you know, all the time I've been saying, you know, you need balance. If you break that balance and you just overuse those, you know, food or nutrition, that is wrong. And that is very unfair. It means, you know, because, you know, if people say that is good for your body, then, you know, the price will go up and only the rich can take, you know, or eat those kind of food, then that is not good. That is just for um, economical, political problem. You know, God's principle is life principle. But our principle is economical pr principle or is political principle. Now, we need to think about our healthy diet in life principle. If we follow the worldly definition, you know, we will have this advantage. You know, vitamin C, people have been saying vitamin C is so important. You know, it lasted, you know, you know, quite 
for quite a long time. But then people stopped looking for vitamin C's anymore. When? That was year 2006. You know, because the report says vitamin C, you know, can be carcinogenous. If you overuse vitamin C's, lipidohydroperoxide, you know, when they looked into that lipid hydro, side, they found something, uh, they found some kind of substances, genotoxin, they found that substance which can cause damage to genes. So American lab, or te lab technicians, they found this. Of course, vitamin C is very important, but if it's too much in your body, you know, it is not good. You know, we take a lot of vitamin C's, but we don't take vitamin C pills. You know, every time you eat, you, know, you start diet, that is your vitamin C. You know, because vitamin C is important, you have to take vitamin C all the time. But you're not supposed to take vitamin C as pills. Well, that kind of ideas, they don't really realize the existence of creator. Now, let's say creator exists and you need vitamin Cs. Then what would our creator do? He would probably create a lot of vitamin Cs here in nature so that everybody can take it. Now, let's say Africans and um, Chinese and Indians, you know, those poor country people cannot take vitamin C's then because they are poor. But vita if vitamin C is important, then everybody should be able to take it. Then it's also, you know, a vitamin C will be also uh, oh, and then God is also responsible for the animals so the animals can take vitamin C's from the nature. So, you know, that's how it is. So our theory, our principle is totally different from our creator's principle. Well, actually, I don't think other countries had that kind of sensation in vitamin C's. Korea is a very interesting country. When someone says this is good and everybody goes for that food. You know, five maybe years ago, you know, tofu in Korea became all black. Well, it turned, you know, to become, it turned to be white again. But, you know, five years ago or so, you know, Koreans loved black tofu. Why? Because of the black beans. Because people started to say, you know, black beans are so important. So they loved eating black, you know, kind of things. Because we have very small population. So if someone says this, you know, everybody follows that style but later on they found out that you know that was not that important you know people find out those kind of things later on later on now let's say our genes are the letters and those letters should be created to exist so we accept the existence of creator Let's say our creator exists, then why did he create us? Because he is love. He needed to create an object to give love. And that's why he created us. And then God is love. If God is love, then I'm sure he wants everybody to be healthy because he's love. Then, if the food is very important for our body, then I'm sure he would, he would create a lot 
it can't be so rare or it can't be so expensive because that's the principle of love. No, let's think about what is is very important. What is the most important thing, substance, in for our body? Let's make it order. Now, you've been listening to um, my lecture. Now, what is the most important thing? Let's say without this, you just pass out. What is the most important thing for our body? Air? No, not really. Without air, even you can, s you know, you can survive for five minutes or so. Yes, the spark. If the spark is, you know, if the spark, if you have no spark, you pass out, you die. No life. You know, like electri electricity to TV set. So the spark is very important for us. If you have the spark, actually you can restore your health. This is very important, so it must be very expensive according to our principle. But then this spark is totally for nothing. We don't pay for this spark. This is totally given to us for free. We don't need to pay. It doesn't go well with money. That is God's love. That is God's spark. That's the beauty, truth, and the goodness. The spark is the most important thing. So that is number one free substance, free thing. Now, secondly, air is very important. Do you buy air to breathe? If it's important, then it is free. Sunlight, water. You know, if you don't drink water for a week, yeah, you die. Here, you know now that you are drinking very expensive water. You know, this is uh, one dollar for a bottle, right? Usually 50, 60 cents, but this is one dollar for a, more than a dollar for a bottle. So you're drinking very expensive water. Well, this is, this is our principle, expensive. If the water is good, then, you know, it should be very cheap. You know, Brown rice is better better than white rice, but then brown rice is more expensive these days. Originally, brown, ri brown rice should be cheap. If you go to the mill, you know, brown rice is cheaper. Because brown rice doesn't get through a lot of process, you know? So you don't need to pay more money on this brown rice. Yeah, when you when you go to the mill, you know, everything is like automatic, you know, machine and things. So at the end of the process, you have the right rice. But maybe one third of, you know, one third of process, you can have brown rice. So, you know, you save electricity and you save everything, you know, an effort. So brown rice should be cheaper than white rice. But then, you know, when you go to the market, when you go to the, you know, rice sh store, brown rice is more expensive. Please remember, if it is important, then it is cheap. But, you know, if you look at, you know, something closely, those that are expensive are the ones that we don't have to take or we don't have to use. I went to America last time. One of my friends, you know, he thought 
you know, he thought I was rich. Now he graduated Seoul University, and he was running this uh, Korean American bank. He said, um, "Invest your money here." Yeah, if you know, if I had money, I wish I could. You know, my friend, he's a very faithful friend, trustworthy. You know, we went to high school together. He's my high school alumni. Anyways, my friend invited me, and then he got Jinsen in America. He found Jinsen in America. So you know, I you know he gave that one root of Jinsen, and I you know ate it, and oh, it was very strong. I couldn't even chew. Those ginseng in the field, yes, I could chew, but then ginseng from the mountain, it was so strong, so I couldn't really eat. You know, my friend gave it to me, you know, to, you know, you know, support me. So I had to eat, but then, oh, it was very difficult to eat. So I pretended like I was eating. And I went to the, you know, bathroom, and I just, you know, flush it out. And I pretended I was chewing. It was very strong mountain ginseng. Because mountain ginseng is so strong, many people, you know, put their trust in that ginseng. They want to believe, and they believe. If you don't believe, there's no effect, placebo effect. Now, New Start teaches you that uh, the more important substances or things for your body is going to be cheaper. But then a lot of people ignore those cheap things, but then they only, they're only they only into those expensive things, $40,000 or $50,000, that kind of food or substance. Remember... If it is important, it will be provided for nothing. And if we provide those proper environment, foundational environment, then our genes will be recorded. The spark will work. The spark will spark our genes. Okay, let's say, you know, water is not more important than air, so air is for free, and then water is a little more expensive than air. Let's think that way. So if it's important for our body, then God created those important things all around us. abundantly, affluently. He created a lot of things for us. Then we can say God is love. So let's say you go to church and you believe in God, you're Catholic, and you've been a Christian for a long time, but then you think, oh, you know what? These expensive things are very good for our body. You know, if you say that, then, you know, your religion is just religion, and your reality is your reality. Now, remember, God is very real. He programmed all the important things and programs in our genes. If you should apply your religion or faith into your real life, but then you go to church and you have your faith, but then you live without your faith or religion, you know, it is not good. So remember, 
if it's more important for your body, it should be cheap, it should be everywhere. Then your whole idea on healthy diet will be changed. Then, you know, healthy food must be very cheap. Now, let's think about it again, rationally. We need to verify these kind of things. These days, many people want to use this very, you know, many people want to verify things. Now, we need to have then standard to judge. But then we can't really make this measurement, make this standard. You know, because everything is all necessary. You know, without one thing even, if one thing is missing, then you have a problem. For example, there are sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. Now, what is the most important thing? You cannot rank them. Without calcium, yeah, you die. Without magnesium, without potassium, you know, if you miss one thing, you know, you die. So we cannot rank them, actually. So if we can rank, and if we rank like from the top to the bottom, and we have to eat those, you know, top ranked food, that is very not right. That's not scientific. You know, we need to have balance. Everything should be balanced. You know, that has been proved. That has been proved scientifically. But then you know what? Most people live in this kind of world you know, where it says, like, oh, this is so important, so you have to take this more. And even our commercial says, this is important for your yourself, so you have to take this more, and things like that. So we're living in that kind of world right now. Now, what, it, what should be our standard? Now, what is the most important thing? Anyways, let's, you know... Let's make our rational standard. What I can suggest, um, let's look in a different way. Then let's think in a uh, opposite side of opposite side way of thinking. Let's say, what is the worst? food for our body. And then let's find out what protects our body from this worst of things. Then we'll find out what the most important thing is. Then what damages our body the most? You know, when I was in medical school, we didn't know. But as America developed uh, modern medicine, dramatically, they found out. Y you know, there are many contaminated, you know, substances or things around us. But even though, let's say, you live in a very clean, pure area, but if this substance is produced, then your genes will be damaged and you will accelerate your aging process and you will get sick. Now, what is this substance? This we call free radicals. Free radicals. Super oxide oxygen. We call this free radicals. And then, you know, scientists found this free radicals. Now, free radicals, they are produced inside of our body instead of coming outside of our body. Yes, of course, we're influenced, you know, badly from uh, outside of things, but then inside our body, yes, also we can damage our genes. 
let's say we take a lot of bad things outside our body and then we also produce something, you know, these kind of free radicals inside our body. If those two things are mixed, then, you know, we're meant to be sick. Let's look at the picture. That's our cell, cell membrane, nucleus. And that's your chromosomes. What is that? Mitochondria, our engine, right? And glucose, you know, the sugar. There are lots of kinds of sugar. Now glucose come in. And then the spark. Sparks our engine mitochondria, and then later it produces the energy. So and byproduct of energy, these free radicals are produced. Now, according to this free radicals direction, our free radical, I mean, free radicals can damage our body, and also free radicals do good on our body. Very interesting. If these free radicals go to the left side, it will damage our mitochondria and decreases the number of our mitochondria. What will happen? if this damages mitochondria. Let's say four cylinder people will be eight cylinder. And this free radicals will damage mitochondria and it will accelerate our aging process. And you know, see, free radicals are damaging our genes, chromosomes, and then you will get, you know, sick because your genes are changed. So free radicals are the main factor of your aging process and your disease. You know, that's like a common sense. When you smoke, you get lung cancer. But then, you know, the main cause of your lung cancer is not like smoking, but free radicals. So for those non-smokers also can have lung cancer, even, you know, if they have a lot of free radicals in them. But you know, some people, even though they smoke a lot, but if they don't produce free radicals, they don't get lung cancer. And they can live up until more than 90 years, things like that. So how much free radicals are produced in your body? According to that, you have disease, you get sick. Let's say, you know, if those free radicals damages your genes, then you get sick. But if this free radical goes toward the right side of, you know, here, then these free radicals will be water and hydrogen. And then these free radicals can do good on our body. So even though you produce free radicals, it doesn't mean that is just bad, but it matters where these free radicals go into the results can be different. Isn't this interesting? Now these free radicals, when do these free radicals produce overly? Yes, when you're stressed, when you overeat, yeah, of course there are many kinds of overeating, but let's say you eat a lot because some people say it is good for your body. That's medication 
or your some you know some special kind of food you take those things like twice a day or you know you take it daily or let's say you know vitamin you know vitamins you take like three pills a day you know daily regularly then um, free radicals are produced remember we need temperance we need balance So if you are covetous, if you are greedy on something, you know, your your free radicals will be produced. Let's say you can only exercise for an hour, but then because you heard oh, exercise is important, so you exercise more than two, three hours, then free radicals can be produced in your body and they will damage and they will attack your T cells. You know, they will attack your kidneys you know, and so on. So everything you should learn how to balance. Temperance is very important. So you know, you want to, of course, you want to get better soon, but you need to be free from those thinking. So if you are free from those thinking while you're eating, you can have this kind of feeling, hmm, I had enough. Then you can stop eating. Then you know how to balance. You know, you keep eating because even though you're full, you say, oh, this is good for my body, so I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat, I'm going to finish up. Then, you know, you actually break that balance. That's the voice of death. So voice of death interferes us not to make the balance. So we need the right signal from God to have temperance. So, overwork, overeat, you know, whatever, you know, over, over, it means you want to do something more. You know, stressful, mentally you're stressed, overwork, overeat, you hate somebody, you're angry, and then, you know, those uh, free radicals will be actively produced. Now, let's say, even though these free radicals are produced a lot, but then they're not meant to go to the left side of that map. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we can be upset, we can be stressed, you know, we can hate, you know, someone. And, you know, every time we do that, those free radicals will be produced. But if those free radicals damage our genes like that way all the time, then that is very, you know, sad. But they, they don't damage our cells all the time. I mean, all of our free radicals don't damage our cells. Then, if they proceed to the right side, then that will if those free radicals change into water and oxygen, then how wonderful it is. This is very interesting. You know, free radicals can be changed into water and oxygen. You know, our liver, it can detoxicate. You know, it can neutralize those poisonous things. You know, when we have alcohol in our body, then liver detoxicated alcohol. According to its ability, we say, oh, you drink a lot. Oh, you cannot drink, you know, and things like that. So according to this ability, you know, alcohol dehydrogenate that's the uh, the substance which is produced 
in liver genes. If it's turned off or if it's not developed, then people cannot drink. You know, when they drink, you know, they're, they got blushed and things like that because these genes are turned off and they cannot produce this substance which can detoxicate the alcohol. You know, me personally, I used to drink a lot. I drank a lot when I was in medical school. So my genes were very active, I guess, at that time. So when I was in school, you know, we had some, you know, drinking fellows. You know, there is um, my friend, one of my friends, you know, he was a big guy. But then as soon as he drinks, he just passed out. He fainted. You know, he was heating people out and, and you know, he couldn't drink. But the he never, you know, hit me. Even though, you know, he was drunk, you know, he, he hit a lot of, you know, people or, you know, my friends. But the he never hit me. Well, anyways, um, you know, he, he passed out, he blacked out, so, you know, I took him, I dragged him to, you know, my house, and, you know, I took care of him. Anyways, he had his own limitation. Even though I drank a lot, you know, I could take care of him. And later, <laughs> later I found out that I got, you know, this nice liver gene this you know I found out that I got this gene from my father because I you know my father he had this wonderful genes in his liver I got inherited remember my father you know was a like a big guy in Manju area and you know when Japan collapsed you know I told you that you know, he, he was very disappointed and, you know, he drank a lot and a lot and um, his T cells got turned off and, you know, he got pneumonia and he passed away. Anyways, our liver detoxicates. Now, even though even though we produce a lot of free radicals, but then SOD, if the liver produces SOD, yeah, there's a gene which can produce, which produces SOD. So even though we are upset and we fight, when we have free, rad free radicals in our body, but if SOD, you know, comes there, then free radicals follow this SOD route and becomes water and high oxygen. You know, when we live, yes, of course we are stressed. And sometimes if the food is so good, then, you know, we sometimes overeat and sometimes we overwork. So, you know, everybody, including me, produces free radicals every day. But if free radicals goes, free radicals go to that side, left side of, or left side, then we will all get sick. But even though we produce free radicals, we don't get sick because God changes this free radicals through SOD. Now it means, you know, God programmed this uh, bad luck brings often brings good luck. You know, that kind of program. We cannot make that program. When you look at your genes, you will realize super intellectual being exists. There's no way to deny this. 
you know, SOD, exi SOD has existed, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. But then now we, you know, found out SDA existed. When I was in school, I didn't learn SOD. We didn't learn free radicals. Recently, doctors found SOD. This gene is in the liver. And so if this gene is turned on, then SOD is produced. And free radicals won't damage our body, our genes. Now these green things, you know, our genes are the bundle of thread. Those, those green ones are histone, very special protein. Now those are our genes wrapped around those green thing, histone. And I told you that we have switch on our genes. You know, there are things which can turn on the switch and turn, do turn off the switch. Now we have this red stuff. Now what's the difference between this and that? Yeah, these are a little dark and these are a little light. So these genes are turned on and these genes are turned off. Those dark ones are turned off and the right light ones are turned off. Why are they turned off? If you look at the picture, you can you can answer. Now see those red ones are attached to the genes. Th that that's the switch. So those red things come to the genes, then genes are turned off. Then genes don't work. But let's say you practice New Start, now you have the beauty and the goodness and the truth, then other things come and other substance come and then they get rid of those red things and then your genes will be turned off. So genes can be turned on and turned off. So in our cells, in, uh, in the liver cell, even though you have SOD genes, but if it's turned off, then you know it's useless. So what do we need? We need to receive the spark. We need to receive the truth, the goodness and the beauty. We need to focus on those things. We need to be positive. We need to forgive people. We shouldn't hate people. Yes. If we hate people, we die. Even though we can't help Hating, you know, people, we should try not to. We must try not to hate them. It is very difficult, I know. This morning, um, someone asked me this question. You know, wherever you go, there, there are some people who stresses, who stress us. You know, you know, when you're single, you're fine, but then when you get married, you stress each other. You know, you don't give stress to your spouse, but then your spouse gets stressed. That happens. You know, my wife and I, we have that kind of things. I didn't thought I was giving stress her, but then my wife got stressed. And then my wife, also the same thing. She did what she thought what was right. But then, you know, I got stressed. So, you know, we can't help it. So wherever you go, in your work, in your school, in your society, I mean, wherever you go, there are some people who stress you. Now, you share, you know, one room together. I'm sure there must be some kind of tense there. You know, some people, you know, you know in the bathroom, and some people close the door and you slam the door sometimes. You know, everybody has their own way. But if you're stressed from all, you know, from those kind of things, 
then you know there are you know stress giver and stress receiver. Let's say you know you get on a plane. Right in front of you, there was a baby, little you know baby, <laughs> cries all the time, and you know gives stress to me. Then should I receive the stress or not? You have to think. You have to decide. You know, if you think uh, if the baby cries, then I'll be stressed, then yes, you will receive the stress. But you don't have to receive the stress. If you believe, if you decide, you should train. People don't train themselves not to receive the stress. There are many ways to release your stress. Well, the Bible, the way that Bible teaches, it's very simple and it's very true. This is what the Bible teaches. If someone stresses you, you have no power. You have no power to deny the stress. If someone stresses you, you have no ability, you have no power to deny that stress because you deny the power in the beginning. It means you're a sinner. Then what can we do? Those kind of power, what what is that? If someone slaps your right cheek, then give him your left side. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense to us. If someone slaps your right cheek, then you have to respond with, you know, iron pipe. And then you have to hit them. You know, that's how I how we feel in this world. Very evil. But the Bible says, if someone slaps your right cheek, then give your left side as well. What does that mean? It means you can't do it. You have no power to do it. Only way to do it, you have to ask power from God. Only God can do it. I created you and I gave you the freedom of choice and I gave you the freedom to mock me even though you insult me I still love you so if you hit slap my right side of cheek then I'll give you my left side of cheek if you really want to you know slap me then you know slap another side of my cheek so that kind of existence God is not stressed so even though someone really wants to stress you, but if you don't want to get stressed, you won't be stressed. Well, there's God is the only one who can love our enemies. If you accept the truth, then you know how to, how, and now, then you will know not to be stressed. Now, you know you have no ability, you have no power, but if God has that power, you know, God loves the enemies. So if you don't want to receive the stress, remember, 
God's love is our energy. That energy will protect us not to receive the stress. Now let's say someone stresses you and then you fight against that person, then both of us will die. Now you have to give them life and also you need to survive as well. Now if someone wants to stab you, then what kind of method do you need to learn? You need to learn how to avoid, how to escape. You shouldn't fight against each other. Then, you know, because two of you will get hurt. So if someone tries to stab you, then you just go that way. And if that person follows you along, and then you, you know, stay out of his way. Well, do this up until your enemy decides not to fight against you. And then you look at them with compassionate heart. Now you have no anger toward your enemy. Give him your pitiful eye, compassionate heart. And the third time, and the third time, you know, your enemy attacked again, and then you went aside okay, of his way. So the third, you know, third, because of the third attack, you know, your enemy just fell down. And then you say, if you really want to kill me, then, you know, go ahead and kill me. Okay? And then the, your enemy won't to kill you. And then, you know, you can become friends. You know, if you try to avoid when someone try to hit you, then, you know, that person will try harder to hit you more. But if you give, you know, your left side of your cheek, then, you know, the hitter won't be so interested hitting it you. You know, some people say if you laugh, people won't, you know, spit at you. Y you know, this kind of old saying. So if you're kind to people, they won't bother you. Let's say power is energy. Now, I have no, I have no power. I have no energy in us. But we know God has that energy. And God always wants to share that energy with us. And when you believe it, and you say, God, I'm going to open my heart. Please give me that energy. And then you will receive that energy. You will receive that power. That is our prayer. God, I can do it. Please give me. And that's why the Bible says, seek and you shall receive. That's what the Bible says. If you experience this Bible verse, you know, you haven't even imagined to seek. And you, ha you thought this is impossible. You didn't seek. And you just, you know, by yourself, you just felt like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to pay back, I'm going to pay back. Because you're always in anger, you know, will stop your SOD genes to produce SOD. Because you have evil thoughts in you. You have anger in you. But when you, you know, tr when you start loving, when you start forgiving people, if you receive that kind of heart in you from God, when you have that meaning, truth, goodness, and the beauty, which activates our genes, if those meaning touches or spark 
the SOD genes and the SOD will be produced. So those free radicals will do good on our body. Then you can release your stress. You need to experience these kind of things uh, vividly. Let's say there's a TV set, and then, but then you know, electricity gets turned off and turned out. I mean, turned on and turned off all the time. So you get agitated. So you took this television, this TV set to a uh, power plant, and then you say. Oh, I don't have to worry because this power plant is producing a lot of energy, electricity, which is, so I don't have to worry. So I will receive this electricity someday. If you believe it, if you don't believe it, now which case will produce more free radicals? If you don't believe it, you will produce more free radicals. You know, faith is free radical, I mean, faith is not like abracadabra. It's not like a shamanist belief. We have to understand the profound, I mean, the foundational structure. You know, our genes, so our genes can be turned on and turned off. You know, like I said, you know, if someone slaps your right side of your cheek, then, you know, give him left side of your cheek. Let's say, you know, you lend some money, but then you're, you know, they don't pay you back. Then, you know, you think, uh, okay, it's okay. I don't have to receive the money. But if you feel like, you know, I have to receive the money, you know, and you're very stressed and angry, upset at that person, then those free radicals will go into the left side which, you know, damages your genes. But if you pray, like, ah, uh, even though I'm upset, but I can live without that money. I have more important thing. I have God. I have God with me. God is more important than money. Now, then, the joy of God will be delivered to your heart, and you will become very happy and joyful. Oh, if because I think in this way, I feel much better. Y you can be like this. Now, you know, joy is the beauty. So that joy will turn on your SOD genes. So those free radicals that has been produced will change into water and oxygen. That is science. True faith is true life science. You know, we have life science, of course. People study uh, life science. You know, I like Berkeley, UC Berkeley University. I love UC Berkeley because it's very, you know, liberal and very interesting university. You know, they have a uh, life science building. But then Berkeley, I mean, let's say that Berkeley University Life Science, they seek the fact, but then you start seek the truth. If you seek the truth, if you seek the truth, you will meet the founder of New Start. You will f meet the founder of life. New Start Science is the deepest and highest science. New Start is not just about healthy diet. It's not all about healthy diet. So that's how it works with our body. I'll talk about stress more later. 
So you have to solve these, you know, problems rationally. When the will of God, when the heart of God comes into your mind, you know, you will have peace and those problems will be solved. And some patients say, oh, if it's that way, then I will be healed. You know, that is the heart of God, that you have peace after that. Oh, if I didn't get sick, I wouldn't be able to find this truth. You know, this school vice master, she's very excited. She's very excited to know God. Uh, she had thyroid cancer, so her function got down. So she has to take those thyroid, thyroid pills. But as she listens to the lecture, she felt like she doesn't have to take it because those turned off genes, if those turned off genes get turned on, then, you know, those genes will be, those genes will produce, you know, the right substance for me. You know, for me, I'm, a, I'm the third person, so I'm kind of unsure, but then she has peace with her. She hasn't taken those thyroid pills from the beginning, but if you don't take it, you know, it shows, you know, you get down. But you know what? She's full of energy. She's full of energy. Even though she doesn't take the pills, she's better even than before. So when you have that spark fully, then those turned off genes, those turned off thyroid genes will be turned on. If those genes are turned on, then you don't need to take the pills. In fact, I don't have to say it might happen and uh, it might, you know, uh, things like that. I use might. Why? Because I am more like academical still. You know, I told you to believe, but then I'm like, uh, maybe you're too, you know, fast. You know, maybe you should take a little. Sometimes, you know, I feel that way. You know, I act like, you know, I believe in God uh, faithfully. But then I realized that hmm, I don't really totally trust, you know, God and things like that. Well, compared to maybe you guys, maybe I, I believe God more. But then this person, look, this person received the spark fully and now she's, she lives with the faith. So, and then I realized that, hmm, so I don't have that much, you know, faith. You know, I'm very honest. When you're honest, I can communicate with you. So, when you want to give lecture, you need to be honest. Then, then people will say that, oh, your lecture is good. If you evaluate, you know, the lecture, let's say you evaluate, evaluate the lecture and your, you know, study was good, you prepare a lot, but then you have no communication with students, then students will, you know, say, students will evaluate, ah, oh, the lecture was bad. Let's say, you know, actually the content itself was not so good, but then, you know, students praise that, you know, class. Why? Because... The teachers, the teacher had good communication with the students. So you know, you know, I have to be so sometimes silly to communicate with you well. Now let's say our free, uh, free radicals are the main factor damaging our genes, that what is the best substance 
for our body. Yes, to prevent this free radical is the best food. Well, we can have then rational standard, right, in this way. So what can prevent these free radicals to be produced? If our free, uh, if free radicals produce, I mean, if free radicals accelerate our aging process and damage, you know, damage our genes and so forth, then what is the substance which can stop or prevent this free radicals to be produced? If there is such substance, then if this substance is in that food, then that food is the best food for our health. That is quite rational. Now free radicals are produced and then it went toward the cells and the damages you know our mitochondria and oxi in oxidate you know our cells and it damages and oxidate and oxidate over there oxidation and oxidation now to prevent this oxidation we call antioxidation we call this antioxidant To prevent this oxidation, we need this antioxidant. Now, antioxidant is very important. But you know what? There are many different kinds of antioxidant. Now, among them, What is the most effective anti-accident? Now what they do, you know, those free radicals come into the cells, but the anti-accident embraces that free radicals so that it doesn't reach the mitochondria. So antioxidants embraces, and they become oxidized. They sacrifice themselves and then genes and mitochondria are protected. They are antioxidant. Now God made those antioxidants. Now there are many kinds of antioxidants. Now there as well. Antioxidant. Now, what is the most important antioxidant? Yes, vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important. So, vitamin C, because vitamin C is the most important antioxidant, vitamin C is the cheapest and is everywhere, and vitamin C should be able to we should be able to purchase vitamin C's in everywhere and should be cheap too. Vitamin C Oh, by the way, these antioxidants exist in all the vegetables. Animal products don't have this anti product antioxidant. Antioxidants are the pigments of the plants. You know, let's say black beans, that black color. Let's say they uh, carrots, the color, the color beta carotene. That's also the pigment, also antioxidant. It's not about beautiful color, but also the color itself it works as antioxidant. What a God. Now, vitamin C must be very cheap. 
if vitamin C is expensive, then you know, God did something wrong. So vitamin C is everywhere, everywhere, abundant. You see the pine trees around here? You know those pine trees, those leaves? They're all antioxidants. You know goats, they take the barks of the trees. They're all vitamin C's. Grasses, all vitamin C's. Roots, potatoes. If, if it is a plant, then they, it has vitamin C. Aren't you thankful? You know, rabbits, you know, they can't go to the drugstore and look for vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important, so you can get it. You can get it, like, anywhere, anytime, because it is very important. It is cheap. Now, a little less important, a little less important than vitamin C, uh, that is we call vitamin E. Because it's a little less important, they, you know, it is a mm, little more expensive. Um, also, it is a little more difficult to purchase than vitamin C. You know those embryo? Brown rice and those corn, you know, those wheat, you know, in there, in that embryo, the little, you know, eye of the seed, they have a lot of vitamin E inside. Little less important than vitamin E, that is beta carotene. Well, beta carotene, that's um, yellow or orange color pigment. You know, it's quite limited, carrots and oranges and things like that. Those color plants, they have beta carotene. So it's, it's more expensive because it's less important. You see, there are many different colors. You know, this is the black color. That's blueberry, by the way. You know, plums and blueberries and, you know, grapes. You know, those kind of bluish color. They have anticyanin. That anticyanin has antioxidant. But many people thought antioxidant is multi-purpose medicine because they felt like antioxidants work in every way. Because people thought if free radical causes all the diseases, then antioxidant you know, will cure all these diseases. So that's how I, they thought. Especially in Korean society, we love multi-purpose medication, you know? And that's how those anti-accidents debut, made their debut here in Korea. And that you see in the newspaper and then uh, mass media. And then, you know, those black beans, the price of black beans will go up and, you know, your tofu will, you know, turn black. But later on, every pigment have all different character. Their function is all specified, classified. 
they found that every color has different roles. So, for example, anticyonin, you know, like it relates with the brain part or the your joints part. And then green color. And then people say, oh, this green color, it has lutein. And then green color has like, green color is multi-purpose medicine again. So, you know, Koreans, they started to eat kiwi. A lot. Kale, vegetables, you know, and kiwi. So when you go to like very, you know, luxurious hotel, then you could find kiwi juice. In the Western world, you know, it's very difficult to find kiwi juice. But in, in Korea, you know, we think kiwi is multi-purpose medicine. So we, you know, take kiwi juice. Well, me, personally, I like kiwi juice. Green is good for your eyes. It's not like multi-purpose medicine. Green is good for your eyes. Now, this is red, red color. Also very important color. Strawberries and tomatoes and watermelon. And then tomato got so famous and popular and you know people start growing tomatoes. And it is uh, related with the prostate. Lycopene is good for you know your prostate. Now beta carotene is good for your lung, lung part, and those uh, light yellow. It's good for your eyes as well. So those antioxidants work in different, you know, places. Their roles are all different according to their pigment. Now, do you understand? You know, those antioxidants is in plantation. So if you have vegetable, vegetable, you know, diet, it is good for your body. You know, many people ask about fish, you know. Well, I'm going to talk about these things later. Now remember, you have to have a new frame of healthy diet. So when you go home, if someone says, eat, try this and try that, you know, how much is that? That's so expensive. And remember, if it's expensive, then it is not good for your body. I hope you can conclude, you can come up to this conclusion.
Thank you.